I'm going to give you my recommendations on how to load out your Aegis Vanguard Harbinger, and we're starting right now. Aegis Combat Assist activated. Systems green. Thank you so much to all the support from patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers that make this possible. Welcome to a Star Citizen's Loadout Guide. What's up, citizens? This is Subliminal here, and in this guide, we will discuss my recommendations for both weapons and components for your Aegis Vanguard Harbinger. Our primary build will be a multi-purpose one that will excel at both PvP and PvE. My full review of the Vanguard Harbinger will be coming soon, so make sure you're subscribed and have the bell clicked. I went live on Twitch just before releasing this guide. Come over and give me your thoughts on the Vanguard Harbinger and my loadout. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. The Aegis A3 Vanguard Harbinger is the UEE's standard fighter bomber, converting the standard Warden model escape pod into a potent bomb bay. And we're going to use that big ass bomb bay to send some crime stat evildoers off to Klesher. I'll also briefly cover stealth. Now that we understand the objective of this build, let's take a look at its components. We'll start with the power plant that generates the power for our weapons and components. The standard power plants on the Vanguard Harbinger are the size 2 grade 3 military class turbo drives. When deciding on a power plant, your priority should be request time and stealth with max power generation being last. So I'll be adding a couple of eclipses. These are grade 1, stealth class, have over 5300 max power generation per second, and a super quick 1.25 second draw request time. We will lose a significant amount of max power draw that we don't need and reduce the time it takes to reach that max power draw down to just 1.25 seconds. If you find yourself slightly deviating from this build and it becomes power inefficient, then pair the Eclipse with a JS400. I'm choosing the Eclipse to reduce power up time and my detection range. Let's discuss its coolers. These cool our weapons and components after they've overheated. The standard coolers on the Vanguard Harbinger are the size 2, grade 2, military class permafrost coolers. I can't stress this enough, you do not need to upgrade these. However, if you want the absolute best performance that's not worth the cost, I recommend adding cool cores. They are grade 3, industrial class, with a cooling rate of 8,000 kilos per second and a draw request time of 10 seconds. By upgrading these, you are reducing your power up and EMP recovery time by 2.5 seconds, but slightly raising your stealth signature. An honorable mention would be the Stealth Nightfalls for lower emissions. For a full explanation on how power plants and coolers work, or for an explanation on how kilo per second is not a unit of measurement, check out my guides on power plants and coolers. Shields and QT drives are coming soon. Now, it's shield generator that protects our ship and these components. The Vanguard Harbinger stock shield generators are the size 2, grade 4, military class secure shield shield generators. I want to go for a tanky build but I don't want to leave myself with a terrible recovery time, so I'll be adding an FR-76. It's grade 1, military class, with an HP pool of almost 25,000, a 310 HP per second regen rate, blocks a minimum of 50% ballistic fire, has a 0 second damage delay, an 8 second down delay, and a 7.5 second draw request time. And I'll pair it with a Rampart. It's grade 1, industrial class, with an HP pool of over 32,000, a 173 HP per second regen rate, blocks a minimum of 50% ballistic fire, has a 0 second damage delay, a 12 second down delay, and a 13.5 second request time. This will significantly raise your overall shield pool. Our regen rate won't be great, but it won't be terrible either. If you'd like a quicker recovery time and a lot less emissions at the cost of shield pool, an honorable mention would be to pair the FR-76 with an Umbra. Or, for a more neutral build, a dual FR-76 wouldn't be bad either. It should be noted that there is another great shield combo in my opinion. Pairing the FR-76 with a Sukaron is great. The Sukaron has 100% ballistic resistance, so it will need to be taken down completely for ballistics to damage the hull from that shield generator, or completely if you're fortunate enough to have two. The upside is unparalleled shield pull and pretty good stealth. The downside is a terrible regen rate. However, you can adapt your playstyle. You will just need to ensure that you take your enemy out before your shields go down completely because if you do, then that's all she wrote. For this reason, I don't recommend dual Sukarons if you plan to PvP. Unfortunately, if you don't own either the Banu Defender or Prowler, there's no way to get access to the Sukaron. And lastly, the Quantum Drive that will help you get to the stores to sell these components faster. The standard QT drive on the Vanguard Harbinger is the size 2 Grade 2 Military Class Jaeger. This drive is honestly really good. 
but there is one that's a little faster, although it's certainly not worth the money. But if you already own one, I recommend using an XL1. The XL1 is grade one, military class, has a 260 megameter per second quantum speed, a 24 per megameter fuel requirement, a 1.75 second spool up, and a 22.86 second cool down time. The XL1 is the fastest size two drive available. And with the Harbs quantum fuel tank, it can make a trip across the system and almost make it back. With an exception of the cool cores, all these components can be found at New Babbage. You'll need to stop by Grim Hex or Area 18 for those. Before we get to weapons, the link to this specific loadout at Urkel.Games can be found via the link in the description. Also, if you'd like, you can head over to the channel Discord, where we have a community of over 1,800 citizens who like to discuss ships, loadouts, components, weapons, and more. And it's where I store my most up-to-date loadouts. I'm excited to announce a new art series, Vessels of the Verse. This will be the first of many designs that will be released alongside buyer's guides and loadout guides. They will be available on display in 48 hours, on the merch store in 24 hours, desktop wallpapers are available right now to Twitch subs, patrons, and YouTube channel members, and mobile wallpapers are available for free via link in the description. Now, let's talk about the stock weapons and my recommendations. Underneath the nose, the Vanguard is equipped with a size 5 hardpoint with a gimbaled size 4 CF-788 combined ballistic cannon mounted. One CF-788 does 731 alpha damage times 53 RPM for a total of 646 DPS and a 3200 meter range. I think the Harbinger can certainly benefit from fixed, so I'll be adding the big ass Attrition 5 laser repeater. One Attrition does 206 alpha damage times 270 RPM for a total of 927 DPS and a 4,500 meter range. These absolutely shred, and with their range, targets are dead before you even know what you killed. An honorable mention would be the CF-557 Galdurin, and honestly, I can't make up my mind between which one of these weapons I like better. Just try them both. Inside the nose, we have four bespoke CVSA ballistic cannons. One CVSA does 225 alpha damage, times 80 RPM for a total of 300 DPS and a 2000 meter range. These cannons have terrible range and we need much more to catch up to that size 5 on the nose. As you may have heard, distortion weapons seems to be working very well, even damaging coolers and causing ships to overheat and shut down. So I'll add two ATVSs. One ATVS does 131 alpha damage times 295 RPM for a total of 644 DPS and a 3100 meter range. And I'll pair them with two GVSRs. One GVSR does 55 alpha damage times 310 RPM for a total of 284 DPS and a 2400 meter range. This build absolutely shreds and has enough DPS to quickly finish off the hull once shields are down. I've tried all distortions in the nose, but felt my TTK was much better with it mixed. The Man Turret totes two size 3 Rocket Pod 9 Rocket Pods. One rocket does 251 alpha damage times 60 RPM for a total of 251 DPS and a 2500 meter range. I'm going to go ahead and take these all the way the f off my ship. And since I'm loving this new distortion meta, I'll be adding Sucker Punch L's. One Sucker Punch does 551 alpha damage times 84 RPM for a total of 771 DPS and a 2500 meter range. This distortion meta seems to lean towards distortion cannons being the most likely to damage a cooler and cause the ship to overheat and shut down. If your enemies manage to get past the pilot's barrage and get close enough to this cannon, it will likely render them a sitting duck. Inside the fuselage, we have two bespoke missile racks with four size 2 missiles. One with four Ignite 2s and one with four Dominator 2s. With the recent changes to missiles, I prefer the quickest lock time. That would be Rattler 2s. One Rattler 2 does 3500 damage, has a 1.26 second lock time, and a 4500 meter tracking distance. An honorable mention, especially if you're having tracking issues with the rats, is to use the Ignite tubes. Also, underneath we have two MSD-423 missile racks with two Arrestor 3s. Stepping up to this size missile gives us a lot more range and tracking distance, but doesn't do much more damage. So instead, I'll be adding some MSD-442 missile racks and equip them with Rattler 2s. This is great for a lot of reasons. There's only one missile type, so there's no confusion on what you're firing. You'll have a quick lock time, and Rattler 2s temporarily blind the enemy. 
And now we have 16 of them. If you'd like to take advantage of that extra range, adding either two Chaos 3s or one Dragon 4 could be viable options as well. And lastly, we have you damn dirty missile throwing apes of come for the Torps. The Harv comes stocked with three Stalker 5s. One Stalker 5 does around 8,900 damage, has a seven second lock time and a 31,000 meter tracking distance. Again, lock time is king, so I'm gonna go with Scimitar 5s. One Scimitar 5 does around 8,000 damage, has a 3.7 second lock time and a 35,000 meter tracking distance. These do a little less damage, but I'd rather have slightly less than the possibility of nothing at all if I can't get my load off in time. The idea is to throw one of these, then head in to finish off the target before the missile even hits. If you don't have a whopping 539,000 Alpha UEC to buy this entire build all at once, I would buy them in the following order. Note, if you don't upgrade the coolers, you can save yourself over 100,000 Alpha UEC. The most important things here are the weapons and shields, followed by the stealth power plants. Upgrading any more isn't a necessity. Let's talk briefly about stealth. While a full stealth build in the Vanguard will not allow you to stay undetected while firing your weapons from outside of your detection range, you can use this as a platform to send a missile toward your enemy with the full element of surprise. So here's how I would load it out. I'll keep the Eclipse power plants from the main build, throw on the industrial grade 3 cool core coolers, you could also go Nightfalls as well, add two stealth grade 1 Umbra shield generators, unless you have Sucarons, it would be beneficial to add at least one, and you can pick whatever QT drive you prefer. Now, for the weapons, it's less cut and dry. For stealth, I prefer long-range ballistic weapons. They penetrate shields and most importantly, don't announce your location to the rest of the verse. But unfortunately, there aren't any size five weapons that fit this description. The deadbolts appear to have an overheat bug, so we'll go gimbaled once again. We'll add a gimbaled Revenant ballistic Gatling under the nose and add the ballistic BVRSs in the nose. As for the turret, the sucker punches will do just fine if you have someone up there, otherwise just leave them empty. Let's take a look at those stealth stats. Your IR in the Vanguard Harbinger after 30 minutes of flying around is around 7500 with this stealth build. But depending on your opposition's radar, your detection range is between 3750 and 5625 meters if you're not using afterburner. You are free to fly around at any speed while firing without raising your IR significantly. But if you use your afterburner, that goes right out of the window. This includes space break, so only use it if you're in trouble and need to bug out. I don't see myself using this stealth build much, but it can be fun to try out. I hope you enjoyed my loadout guide for the Harbinger. I'd love to hear about yours down in the comments. And let me know if you're enjoying this new distortion metal. My full review of the Aegis Vanguard Harbinger will be coming shortly, so make sure you're subscribed and have the bell clicked. I went live on Twitch just before releasing this video. Come and hang out. If you enjoy my channel, there are so many ways to support it, ranging from free options like Prime Gaming subscriptions and sending Alpha UBC in the verse, Sub Club subscriptions, merch, to more generous forms of support. Head over to subliminalschannel.tv to learn how. Your support in all forms makes this channel possible. Even your viewership, liking, and subscribing goes a long way. To continue watching, here's a video I think you may like. Here's a video YouTube thinks you may like. And until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.